Okay, so we've um, played around a bit with a few things here with a comma kind of punctuation. What I thought we could do now is we could play around with some other standard template library things, particularly vectors. Now we've seen with things like um, arrays, we've seen how you have to declare the size of an array and sometimes you, you can get away with that with using pointers but um, I was going to talk about something something absolutely terrible called linked lists however fortunately you don't really need to use linked lists anymore linked lists were ways of uh, creating data on the fly creating great chain structures but always horrible always with memory problems always uh, full of bugs don't need to bother with that anymore because we have a thing called vectors. So, oh, we need to include need to include the vector library before we can have vectors. A vectors are, you know, it's kind of a superset of arrays. But this is this is the beauty of these kinds of vectors is that you can have um, things where you don't need to declare the size beforehand. You can add to them. You can push things into them. You can pop things out of them, and C++ manages all the memory stuff in the background behind the scenes. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a vector, which is like a thing of it as being a, a kind of serial array, but we don't need to declare the size. I'm going to call it a double vector. And look at that. We're all... Um, oh, what's wrong with this? This should be all right. Include vector. Shouldn't be any problem there. What does it say the problem is? No template name vector. Um, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> usual usual, usual business. I always forget this. Space STD. There we go. Should get rid of it. Lovely. So, we haven't declared it as a size, you know. Don't need to. We just say, there it is. It's a vector. And we have said, uh, because this is a... Um, let's write this out again. When I put you can see that it's a template class which comes with the standard template library. Uh, you can say it's pretty much anything you want it to be, but I'm going to say it's a double, and I'm going to call it dvec, and I'm going to put some double numbers in there. Now, how do we add elements to this uh, to this vector? Dead easy. Dvec. Um, I don't. Somebody don't, don't just call this push. They call it push back, and you put numbers into it like this way. So there's one number. So this, this vector now has one element. Let's do a few more. You could use a for loop to do this, but uh, don't have to. So 23.05. Um, let's do a few more. Dvec push back. Uh, obviously we're going to have 666. Oh. Otherwise life would be incomplete. A um, couple more. Push back. Push back. 88.88. Uh, two fat ladies. Four fat ladies, in fact. And 98.72. And a very simple one at the end here. And we'll have um, one. Why not? Okay, we've now got capitalize those things there, put little v's in. We've now got six elements inside our um, vector, but we let's prove that. We let's let's write a little subroutine to print that out. So what I'll do is I shall just write a little subroutine. Uh, we'll send up a pointer to this um, new vector I've created and print out, we're going to have return zero at the end of course with our main function. Uh, let's write a, um, because we are template gurus now, we're template gods and goddesses, let's go mad with a template function. In case we have any other kind of um, serial type thing in the future that isn't strictly a vector, let's use vectors. So what we'll do is we'll have t star vector 
and we'll just put a little for loop in the old fashioned for loop. Now we're going to do something else in today's lesson where we're not going to use old fashioned for loops. We're going to use a thing called an iterator, but let's just show you a couple of functions. Oh, we get a function with vectors called size that will tell you how big your vector is. This should return um, a six because there are six elements in there. So you don't need to keep a track of the size, you know, it's all nicely soft coded, which is fantastic. And you can just, again, you also get, if you want a particular element, you just say, give me the element at position I, position zero, position one, all the way to five, end line. Uh, I'll just also as well, just for sanity, I'll just put a little, just a little thing there, just to let us know we've finished printing a particular list. And name, and then return. This is a void function, of course. T stars nice um, because we're sending in this address here. This should correct now, shouldn't it? What's wrong with that? Oh. Change the name. Was that corrected? Lovely. Okay, let's let's print that. Hopefully, that should work. There we are. We've got six elements being printed out, and then just a little sanity message there at the end. So that's that little sanity message there. Look at that! Isn't that great? You know, you can get the size of the vector. So you can just quickly do that now. Remember using our pointer notation we talked about a few lessons ago. And that should give us the size of the vector. There we are, size of vector 6, lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so that's a couple of functions we've got. We've got, uh, we can create the vector, we can make it any kind of thing we want. We don't have to tell what tell C++ what size it's going to be yet. C++ will do all of that. That means we don't have to get to the horrors of linked lists. We can push things into the, um, into the vector. Now this one's a bit ugly. All these numbers are fun, fun and funky, aren't they? This one's a bit boring, so what I'd like to do is get rid of that from the uh, from the vector. So you can do that easily enough. You just um, pop it up, pop it back out again. So again, I don't understand why it's not just called pop. It's called pop back for some reason. It seems a bit uh, sick. Five letters for no reason. Uh, if we reprint it again, you'll see that we should have lost the last thing we put in there. Again, just look on the internet for there's many 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 functions you can use with vectors I'm just going to show you some of the more important ones so that should have dropped this this marked one here uh, should have taken the vector down to five let's have a look there we are so the vectors now gone to, down to five and that's uh, got rid of that boring one got some decent numbers in there lovely I'll just show you a couple of other things before we finish today the Second thing I'd like to show you is something called an iterator. Now, an iterator, when you think of an iterator, think of a zip. Think of all the teeth of a zip. Someone zipped up their zip. Some nice dress. There's a nice dress. Nice lady's dress. Red, red or black dress. Think whichever you prefer. Nice zip, about three feet long. I want you to think of each one of these as being a pair of teeth in that zip. Now, an iterator is the actual zip mechanism. And it can slide down each of these elements one at a time just as when you pull a zip you slide that little mechanism down each of the pairs of teeth okay so an iterator is a like a little pointer which points at a particular member of a vector so we're not going to use this old-fashioned for loop that we you know we've got from the 1960s with C this is C++ so we're going to use a vector now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a, an iterator. We need to create that little zip mechanism. So let's just do that now. It's um, a kind of subsidiary class uh, from Vector again. So 
we need to just go down a little level and get out this you know we've got all sorts of things in here but uh, inside the vector kind of um, class but I, I this time I want an iterator so there we are I've created an iterator so I've created my zip mechanism and in a second I'm going to attach it to my to my uh, vector I haven't done that yet I shall do that in a subroutine and what I'll do with a subroutine is I will call I'll create a new subroutine again I'll send off the pointer to the dvec now this already is a pointer so we normally pass it by value because it's just a you know a few bytes we don't need to worry it's if we sent off the vector by value we could be sending off something enormous and very slow and creating copies and things so we send off the pointer to it but this already is a pointer so think of a zip again a 3000 feet long you don't want to send off a 3000 foot long zip to a subroutine but the zip mechanism is always just a pointer it's just that little zip mechanism you put your thumb and your forefinger around so it's very small so we generally pass it by value now we haven't linked the two together yet we'll do that inside the subroutine so let's do that now then and um, obviously we haven't written this subroutine yet and again because we are template gods we are going to be template gods here we go so template class t that's going to be the that's going to be the pointer to the vector we'll also have class u as well and that's going to be the the iterator so let's just do that then void iterator what's it called iterator vec let's get the name right iterator vect and t star vect and we'll have u for the iterator lovely oh, it's looking looking official now so what we're going to do is we're going to say this instead of for int i which is very old fashioned we're going to say for iterator Um, equals now we are going to link it now to that vector with five elements in it vector begin so what we've done is we've linked the iterator to that first element inside the vector there that's what we've done inside this for loop um, we're going to move it along one at a time. We're going to pull the zip down the dress until the dress falls off until we get to the end and we get to that last bit of the dress. Just to help the lady go to sleep, you know, so she can put a nighty on and go to sleep. So we've got, to, we're going to go from the beginning to the end. And here's the iterator again. We're going to use, this is pointer arithmetic. Remember, this is a pointer. And we're going to use pointer arithmetic to just send the iterator along one at a time. So it's going to be iterator there. And then when we add one on, it's going to be iterator there. And eventually, we'll get to the last one. And then for the last step, we'll go one beyond the last one. And when we get to there, we'll have hit the end. So we're not going to accept the end. So as soon as we get to that point there, once we've, you know, if you've broken the zip, you've pulled the zip too far, then we're going to stop. So better than, uh, you compare it to the for loop, let's just copy this and bring it down. Very similar construction, just a bit more modern, a bit more funky. It's a bit more funky. You can see that it's a bit more, uh, a bit more exciting more modern a bit more smooth a bit more like an audi s8 not like a fiat punto right so um again now all we need to do is what that iterator is pointing at say we're on the first element again it's actually a pointer to this thing here whatever's in here so all we need to do is kind of de-point it and we get out the value so we don't have to we don't have to do this 
we can just do this. So we can just say, give me the value of the thing that the pointer is pointing at. Super. And then we'll just put a little sanity check in there. Again, just so that we know we've got to the end of the, um, the end. So it'll go round and round and round five times, and then we'll print out this little helpful message here. So look, if, if you're comfortable with this now, you are now a template god or goddess, which is brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant. And later on in the future, you'll be able to put any kind of vector in here and any kind of uh, iterator, not just a double vector and not just a double iterator, but anything. And the template mechanism will deal with all of the complexity of that. So it all looks all right. You never know until you press the build button, do you? But Build succeeded, looks good. Fantastic. Now I know it looks the same, but um, it's just a bit more funky, a bit more modern, a bit more clean, a bit more nice. And there's various other things we can do with, uh, with all this business. Now here's a little trick I thought would be useful just to finish on today. Um, if we look at this, this is no good, is it? Okay, so I've got I've got five traders, and I need to I need to ask one of them to further his career elsewhere. And I'm going to do it on the commissions they've earned this year. But that's, you know, there's, there's there's too much information to look through. So what I'd like to do is sort that information, so that I can pick the one with the least commissions to to ask uh, to further his or her career elsewhere. Um, now. Can I be bothered writing a bubble sort? Oh, I don't know, it's just going to take for a oh, but Can I remember the notation for a bubble sort? Oh no, my head's hurting, I've got too much to do. I've got telephone calls and emails to answer. I can't be bothered figuring out. Well, don't you worry your little head about that. Because built into C++, now that we have access to all of this um, template stuff, we just have to do this. Go to the beginning of that vector. Put a marker in at the end of that vector and then sort that vector out so it'll take all those values from the begin point to the end point and it will sort them C++ I mean will sort them all for you and we can prove that because if we if we rejig this then this has now sorted itself out Look at that. Look at that. Unsorted. Didn't have to write a bubble sort. Sorted. Now, iterators, you can get all sorts of iterators. You can get reverse iterators. You can you can play around with the, the um, documentation. Again, as homework tonight, I'm going to ask you to look for the documentation on C++ vectors. But I think we've done all the hard work here with these two template classes. I think we've done a lot of hard work here by thinking about how to create a vector and how to put information in, how to take information out, how to create an iterator to um, a vector, how to join them together with this notation here, how to step through an iterator, how to print out the values in an iterator. I think we've done all the hard work and also we've done a basic sort we haven't had to write a complicated bubble sort algorithm we haven't had to use for loop isn't that marvelous anyway um standard template library i think we know enough now to be dangerous with vectors see you next time